In this video, we are going to understand what do we mean by data transmission and data transmission modes. But before starting that, we should consider what do we mean by data when we talk about data in computer science. So data has many definitions in computer science. It is used differently with different concepts of computer science. The very first definition of data is that a data is collection of facts and figures. Like facts, a proper name, a proper word of a language can be a fact. Not random letters, but a proper word can be a fact. And figures, obviously, we mean numbers by figures. So collection of facts and figures is data. Second definition is the binary numbers we input in the computer using input device. So whatever we enter using input devices, whether it is a keyboard or a mouse or a microphone, a scanner or any other input device, obviously that is converted into binary numbers, into a binary form, into a binary pattern when it enters in the computer. Okay, so that is also called data that we input. The binary numbers saved in our storage devices of computer. All the data that we have in our storage devices like hard disk, USB, CD and DVD, that is also data. The binary numbers we transmit to other devices and computers from our devices. It means when we have communication with other devices, when we send a picture, a video to somebody using WhatsApp or Facebook or Messenger or Instagram or email. So obviously we are sending binary numbers together. Those videos and pictures are converted into binary numbers. So that is also data. That is why we have the concept of data packages. Okay, that you pay the company for a certain amount of data. So you can download and upload a certain amount of data using a network. So these are the four common definitions of data in computer science. This is how we can understand what data is in computer science. Now data transmission versus data communication. What is the difference between data transmission and data communication? Now look here, we have a network here. Okay, we have several computers connected to a hub or a switch and they are able to transmit data to each other. You see what happens in data transmission, data transmission happen between devices like from computer to a certain device, okay? But the process of sending a particular message from one device to another, the whole process is called data communication. The ability of two devices to communicate with each other, the process of two devices to send and receive data to each other is called data communication, the whole process. And within these process, there are several devices are involved. Like right now, my voice is reaching your ears. My voice is reaching my from my device to your device. There are several devices involved in this process. Like your the router at your home, the tower from which you are connected, the satellite. Okay, so each of these devices is making sure that we can have data communication but when the data is transmitted from one device to another, like from your computer to your router, from your router to a satellite or a fiber optic cable, this simple single transmission from one device to another is called data transmission. But the whole process is called data communication. I hope I'm making sense. Now, what is data transmission? Data transmission, you already know what is data transmission. Data transmission can be short distance, 
like from computer to a printer okay both devices are close data can be sent from computer to a printer and data transmission can be long distance like from one computer to a global network like you are sending data to a satellite from your computer directly factors to consider when transmitting data so when we study data transmission we should study the direction of transmission and we should study the method of transmission like two devices which method they are using for transmission of data and in which direction from sender to receiver or from in which direction one way or two way the data can be transmitted from one device to another so when we study data direction of transmission we have several transmission modes that can be simplex that can be half duplex and that can be full duplex now let's study simplex first what happens in simplex we call simplex when data is being transmitted in one direction only it means you have only one sender and one receiver sender will always send data to the receiver and receiver will always receive data from the rece sender receiver will never become the sender and sender will never become the receiver at any point it will always be a sender and the receiver will always be a receiver for example from computer to a printer so data is always transmitted from computer to printer so we can say this is an example of simplex transmission there is never a time when computer receives data of some kind from the printer it is us we are always sending data our computer is always sending data to the printer now the second mode is half duplex what happens in half duplex data can be transmitted from sender to receiver and sender can become receiver and receiver can become sender but not at the same time when sender is in the sending mode it will only send data when receiver is in the receiving mode it will only receive data when receiver gets in the sending mode it can send the data and when sender can get in the receiving mode it can receive data okay so we say in both directions but not at the same time data can be sent from point a to point b or from b to a along the same line but not at the same time this is the explanation for example a conversation on a walkie talkie walkie talkie which law enforcement organizations use okay in which they say over and out again and again copy that roger that okay so what they are doing in a walkie talkie they are switching their modes from sender to receiver when they have, when they have to say something they say something by uh, by a button by pulling a button down or up they become sender and after sending the message saying what they want to say they say cop uh, over and out which is a signal for the other person on the connected to the walkie talkie that i am done now you can switch your mode to sender if you want to say something or remain a receiver for uh, any other message from any other person okay so our conversation on a walkie talkie is an example of a half duplex transmission then the third mode is full duplex what happens in full duplex both directions simultaneously means at the same time so sender is a also a receiver sender can also send and receive at the same time and receiver is also a sender it can receive and send at the same time this is the most common kind of communication or transmission okay all the internet or the or a conversation on a phone line or a broad bro, broadband internet connection is a full duplex transmission okay phone communication in turn using the internet though all of these are simultaneous transmission between the sender and receiver both can be a sender and both can be a receiver now the next thing is method of transmission 
what do we mean by method of transmission which method they are using so we have types of letter transmission here serial letter transmission and parallel letter transmission okay so method can be serial method from transmitting data from device a to device b or that can be a parallel transmission from parallel method from sender to receiver device a to device b so what happens in serial transmission in serial transmission data is sent one bit at a time okay only one bit is transmitted using a single wire or a channel okay all the bit follows that one bit they are sent one bit at a time in a one line in a one wire bits are sent one after other as a single stream like for example you have a sender device and from sender device data is being sent to the receiver device one after another bits are being sent from sender to receiver one after another and they are connected with only one wire or channel obviously this is going to be a slow method of transmitting data it will take a lot of time to send one bits one after another second method is parallel data transmission and what happens in parallel data is sent several bits at a time more than one bits 8 16 or 32 or 64 bits can be sent at the same times so obviously they have more than one wire they have more than one wire they have several wires they can have eight eight wires for sending eight bits they can have 16 wires for sending 16 bits at a time they can have 32 wires for sending 32 bits at the at a time each wire transmits one bit because each wire is transmitting one bit only but we have many different wires many number of wires from sender we have one channel another 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 and we are sending bits through it and receiver is receiving the data from this parallel channel let's understand the difference between serial and parallel data transmission methods we already know that serial data transmission works well over long distances it is very suitable to use serial data transmission when you have a wire or a communication channel longer than 2 meters parallel transmission works well over short distances parallel parallel transmission is more suitable for shorter distances because there is a problem of skewness in the data okay data gets out of synchronization in parallel data transmission if we are using it for longer distances then serial transmission has slower data transfer rate obviously when you have only one wire and you are sending data using one wire only so obviously you will have a slower data transfer rate parallel transmission has a faster data data transfer rate because you have multiple channels multiple wires 8 16 32 or 64 wires and you can send data you can send bits by those wires simultaneously so obviously you are going to get a faster speed one channel wire is used in serial transmission and in parallel several channels or wires are used data arrives at destination fully synchronized in serial transmission okay so there is no problem of synchronization there is no problem of skewness okay what is the problem of skewness the problem is this that when you are sending multiple bits using wires so what happens they do not reach at the same time so bits can interchange their places and when they interchange their places they can uh, change the data the data is changed obviously okay so the data is unsynchronized we have a problem of skewness in the parallel transmission whereas in serial we don't have this problem transmission between computer and a printer or 
between a keyboard and a computer between a mouse and a computer between a microphone and a computer these transmissions can be serial transmission okay but the transmission inside the computer which means on the motherboard and to and from motherboard like mother connecting motherboard with the hard disk or an ssd or connecting ram with the cpu all the wires in the motherboard all the components on the motherboard they are using parallel transmission because distance is very minimum very short and we need higher data transfer rate for the working of the cpu that is why we use parallel transmission method in internal circuits of the computer less risk of in external interference due to fewer wires so external interference what is external interference external inter interference is this when you have a more powerful wire near the wires near your data transmitting wires so the ones and zeros traveling from your wires can be affected by a more power more electromagnetic source more powerful source and that they can change your zeros to ones and ones to zeros okay so the external interference is possible in parallel transmission as well when the two wires they are the parallel wires that are transmitting data they can also affect each other they can also change zeros to ones of each other the, these are electronic signals remember this they can change each other zero can be made one during transmission and because of this reason our data is corrupted okay so in serial we don't have many wires that is why we don't face the problem of external interference but in parallel we can face the problem of external interference means some other wire can affect the data transfer the data transmitted using another wire okay that is called external interference not a preferred method when speed is important when you want to make a high speed transmission obviously you will not use serial transmission because it is slow but if you want a reliable transmission you will use serial obviously or a long distance transmission because serial uh, parallel would have many errors serial is error, serial transmission is error free transmission so preferred method when speed is important so parallel data transmission is preferred when speed is very important when you want a faster data transmission less expensive due to fewer hardware requirements obviously you will use lesser wires okay the ports are very simple they don't use much metal okay and metals are expensive so serial is not expensive because it is using lesser wires and metals in every form whereas parallel transmission requires more hardware more metals so that is why it is now we have an activity to check our understanding of data transmission methods and data transmission modes okay now remember what we have studied so far we have studied data transmission modes which are simplex half duplex and full duplex then we have studied data transmission methods which are serial and parallel okay so let's understand the question explain what is meant by serial half duplex transmission so a transmission which is serial as well as half duplex now you have to define it obviously what do we mean by serial one bit is being transmitted from sender to receiver and by what do we mean by half duplex we mean that sender when it is sending it is only a sender it cannot receive and receiver when it is receiving transmission when it is receiving the bits it will only receive it cannot send bits or transmission to the sender okay so the answer would be two way transmission you will have a two way transmission because of half duplex but one bit is transmitted at a time because of serial but not at the same time because of half duplex okay so the first and last part of the sentence is describing the half duplex transmission whereas the middle part of the answer is describing the 
serial part of the transmission serial part of the question question 2 is explain what is meant by parallel full duplex transmission okay now you have to define parallel and full duplex transmission or, or transmission which is parallel which means you have multiple wires that can transmit multiple bits at the same time whereas full duplex full duplex means both the sender and receiver can do sending and receiving simultaneously they can be a sender and a receiver simultaneously at the same time so the answer is two way transmission because of full duplex several bits are transferred because of parallel simultaneously is answering the full duplex part okay the next question is explain what is meant by serial simplex transmission serial simplex transmission so serial is one bit at a time and simplex is one way transmission so the answer looks like one way transmission one bit is transferred at a time one bit is transferred at a time is explaining the serial part and one way transmission means sender is only sender and it will never receive and receiver is only receiver it will never send one way transmission only activity question is which type of data transmission are being described now you have to guess which type of data transmission is being described here number 1 data is sent one bit at a time in one direction only so now guess data is sent one bit at a time so one bit at a time represents serial okay and in one direction only it represents simplex so answer would look like this serial simplex question 2 is data is being sent 8 bits at a time in one direction only so 8 bits are not one bit more than one bits when you have a more than one bit transmission it becomes parallel and in one direction only it makes it simplex so answer is parallel and simplex this is a parallel simplex transmission third question is data is sent 16 bits at a time in both directions simultaneously answer is parallel and full duplex this transmission represents parallel full duplex transmission because 16 bits are being sent in both directions simultaneously both direction makes it duplex okay and if the if, if it is happening simultaneously it is full duplex okay fourth is data is sent one bit at a time in both directions simultaneously okay so one bit at a time means serial and in both direction simultaneously means full duplex next is data is sent 16 bits at a time in one direction only okay 16 bits more than one bits means parallel and one direction only means simple now that we have studied the serial and parallel methods of transmission there is another method of transmission which is most commonly used nowadays and since it has it has been invented it is replacing the serial and parallel methods very quickly but well, it has already replaced the serial and parallel transmission in many devices that is the universal serial bus method the usb cable and usb port let's study what is a usb and which method of transmission usb provides us and why we are replacing everything every other method with the usb port okay so it is clear from the name that it is universal okay means it is a standard method and it is using the serial method of data transmission okay so this is the first point a form of serial data transmission it is a standard method for transferring data between devices and computer so here is one important point the second point is standard method for transferring data between devices and computer 
Now remember, we are not using it for making computer networks. We are only using USB for connecting other devices with the computer. We are not using it to connect us with the internet. We are not using it to connect a router with the computer. Okay, we have a different cable for that. Okay, so it doesn't have all the benefits. There is something faster than USB or better than USB. That is why we are using that transmission for connecting with the internet. Anyways, the third point is allows both half duplex and full duplex data transmission. So with a USB cable, you can do half duplex, okay, and you can do full duplex. A full duplex means simultaneous data transmission between sender and receiver. Sender can send and receive at the same time, okay, and receiver can perform receiving and sending operation at the same time. But in half duplex, not at the same time. So a USB cable consists of four wired shielded cable, shielded cable. Now in one USB cable, you have four wires. Two are for power, the red and black color one. Okay, those are for power and two for data, white and green. So white and green are used to transfer data. They are actually used for transferring data. Okay, so these were the old ports for connecting mouse and keyboard. They were like this, not exactly like this, but they look, looked like this. They had, you see how many pins, they had more than 10 pins to connect a keyboard to a computer or a mouse to a computer. But now these are replaced by USB. This is the picture of a cable, a USB cable. You have one red, one green, one black, one white. Red and black, red and black are pro for providing power, whereas green and white are for actual data transmission. Okay, and here you can see a USB port. Okay, a hub. Like if you if you uh, if you don't have any more ports with your computer and you want to connect more devices, you can buy a po a USB hub. Connect the hub with one of the USB ports with the computer. Okay, and you can plug one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven other devices using a USB hub. What happens when a device is plugged into a computer using a USB port? So when you plug a device into the computer using a USB port, what happens? How the computer recognizes your device, what happens actually? How the device is automatically starts functioning? What is happening there? Let's understand this. The first thing that happens is this, that a small change in voltage occurs in data wires. Okay, a small change in voltage occurs in the data wires. So obviously they are conducting current. Number two is computer detects that a device is present. So when the voltage drops, the change in the voltage is detected by the computer. So it means that a device is, has been attached or plugged into the computer. Device is recognized and appropriate device driver is loaded. So the device is recognized like computer tried to understand, tried to know what kind of devices is this and from its memory, from its storage, computer tries to find out the software which can run this device, okay, which is called device driver, a software that enables us to use the device to run the device properly in the computer it is called device driver you cannot use a device without a device driver okay if you don't have a driver for a device you cannot use that device most of the device device drivers for the devices are already present in the computer if they are not present in the computer if they are if the computer is unable to install them from the storage device they will look for them in the on the internet they will download it for you automatically and they will install them automatically okay this is the four point as well if the device driver is not found it will be downloaded from the internet benefits of using universal serial bus system like why are we using usb system and why it is so popular why it has replaced the mouse and the keyboard ports the mouse and the keyboard cables 
so what are the benefits number one is devices are automatically detected so the voltage surge because of the voltage surge okay the change in the voltage devices are automatically detected computer knows a device is plugged in device drivers are automatically installed so back in the days you had to do it manually but with the usb ports the device drivers the, detec the detection of the device and the device drivers they are automatically installed connections can fit only one way preventing incorrect connections being made so you have only one way to fit the connection back in the days when you they had circular uh, ports and cables with the pins so there was very high chance that you may lose one of the pins while connecting it to the port okay now it is impossible okay you don't uh, lose your usb cable or usb port while plugging in plug it, plugging it in the port okay there is there are only one way so it's either this way or that way but back in the days those were circular so and they had pins in them very weak pins so there was a high chance that you will lose one or two pin and because of losing that only one pin you had to buy a whole new cable so connections can fit only one way preventing incorrect connections being made became an industry standard so it became an industry standard one cable one port can be used for multiple devices like you can use the same cable for multiple purposes you can use the same cable for charging your mobile phone and transferring data from your mobile phone to the computer as well there are many examples for this data transmission rate ranges between 1.5 mbps megabits per second to 5 gbps this is very good okay different qualities different versions of usb cable provides data transmission rates 1.5 mbps to 5 gbps the best one can provide 5 gbps this is very good no other cable no other transmission method has this much speed no need for external power source because cable supplies plus 5 volt so you don't need external power source you don't need to connect a usb cable with another power source because for data transferring you don't need a repeater between the wires because they already have a wire inside them which is responsible for the power okay error free transmission ensured by usb protocol okay so usb uses a method for data transferring which is error free there is no way you can get an error in the data transmission okay i the because of the method they are using easy to add more usb port by using usb hub so you can buy a usb hub which will have more than one ports okay you can connect the usb hub with the computer and there you go you have many usb ports in your computer usb is backward compatible like there are many versions of usb usb 1.0 2.0 3.0 usb type a type b type c so it means they are backward compatible like if you have a port which is you which is usb 3.0 you can still connect a usb 2.0 cable with it okay it is not necessary that you have to connect a usb 3.0 cable with the port so this is a good feature of a usb cable nowadays we have a very new version of usb technology and it is so much better from the previous technologies we are talking about universal serial bus type c it is very new and it is up and coming with every devices and it is the future and it is so much better from the previous versions let's understand about what is usb type c and why it is so much better with the previous versions it is expected to become the new industry standard a new format you will have a usb type c port and cable in every device very soon it is backward compatible to usb 2.0 and 3.0 using a suitable adapter okay so basically usb 3 usb type c is basically 
uh, in a different shape so that is why you can not use the same port for connecting type C but with a suitable adopter that can take input from a USB C type C and transfer it to the older versions convert it into the older versions you can still connect the USB 2.0 and 3.0 using a suitable adopter the adopter for it it has 24 pin symmetrical connector can fit either way around so you don't have to flip the USB cable USB connector if you are put, uh, putting it in a wrong way if you uh, in the USB type C you can fit it either way because it is in a symmetrical shape and it has 24 pins 12 on one side 12 on another side it can fit either way it is a smaller and thinner than previous USB connectors it is a smaller and thinner which means very less material will be used in the make in the manufacturing of the USB type C so it will be cheaper it can offer 100 watt equivalent to 20 volt power means faster charging so universal serial bus type C provides faster charging because it has the cap capacity to provide power up to 100 watt that is why you are because of USB type C you are watching in the ads of mobile phones that providing faster charging 35 watt faster charging 65 watt per faster charging with every new phone why are they having a faster charging technology because of the USB type C they are using the cable USB type C cable for faster charging this is not the feature of a mobile phone that it can charge itself so fast but it is the feature of the cable that is faster the type C cable and the same wires the same wires that are charging the phone in so much speed obviously they are also going to transfer data at a very high speed what we know from the previous versions of the USB they can they have a data transfer rate up to 5 GBS okay 5 GBPS gigabits per second but universal serial bus type c provides up to 10 gigabits per second which is double the speed of the previous versions can support 4k video quality so you can use a usb type c cable and transfer 4k video to any device like you don't need an hdmi cable now for viewing a 4k video on your tv or a computer or a video game you cannot you don't need a HDMI cable to play video game you can simply connect your device your PS5 or any other device to a screen and transfer 4k video quality from that device to the screen okay all with this all of these things can happen using a USB type C this is how it looks like okay one is the connector of two on the right hand side you see the connector of USB 2.0 but on the left hand side what you see you see a USB type C connector okay look at the difference in size okay this is how it is symmetrical okay look at the size 